Hey guys, welcome to the Little Mouse Advanced Weapon Tactics, and today we're going to be going to the Bronze Age. And today we got the Danish Bronze Sword. So, we're going to be testing what Bronze can do against our new Ming heads. Bronze is a, uh, you know, I've worked with Bronze, I've poured Bronze at high, high temperatures, molten Bronze. So, uh, theoretically, I could make one of these swords. I didn't make it, it's from a New York artist, and uh, I will leave his name in the description. So uh, you will know who made this sword, but we're going to be testing the bronze sword against our new Ming heads. Little Mal presents Advanced Weapon Tactics, the weapons review show that tests the lethality and destruction of various cultural artillery. Will this week's weapon be powerful enough to destroy our new Ming heads? Find out now. Do not try this at home. What would you have to say about the bronze sword, Matt? Oh yeah, I'm definitely interested to test out a bronze sword. I've never actually, you know, been in contact with bronze. I've never used a bronze weapon. Um, I have very little experience with bronze uh, in comparison to Little Mao. He's got a lot of experience. So I'm interested to see how this thing is going to play out. Okay, so this bronze sword was casted by the New York artist Chris Leventino. And uh, right in our state of New York right here, and it was casted. So it does have a little bit of pitting, as you can see here. But all in all, it seems like a good sword. It is one piece of bronze. So that way there's nothing for you to break off. The only thing that I could see maybe breaking off is I think these were added on after, just these three little pegs. But other than that, nothing theoretically should break off the bronze sword. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, since it is one, one piece, how much shock I'm going to get in my hand when I strike with this. But we'll see when that happens. And uh, it's very, very nice. I did get it sharpened through Cult of Athena, so it's pretty, pretty nice. And uh, we're going to be testing that on our new Ming head. Alright, so this is a one-handed blade. And I'm not usually familiar with one-handed blades. And it kind of locks your hand into it. It's good so the, the sword won't go. But I, I usually like the Chinese style where you can put a second hand on the sword if need be. But um, it is a solely a one-handed sword. But we're going to see how that will play out here on Advanced Weapon Tactics. E-R Sword! On our new Ming heads. I think that is 100% our best strike. This far superbs the Shanghai Spy Sword. Now let me open this up. Ooh, that cracked right into the blood bags. So wow, that is pretty devastating. This is 100% a one hit kill. What would you have to say about the first strike with our Danish bronze sword? I'm definitely impressed with the Danish bronze sword. I mean, you just saw the amount of damage that it did. Absolutely amazing. Went all the way through the silicone flesh and the skull. You can see the blood bag. Very, very impressed. So we got Matt with the Danish bronze sword, and he's going to do a slash on our new Ming head. So I'll give you a countdown. E. R. Sun. So again, Matt didn't even really hit it that hard. And I know the skull is already cracked. Why don't you go ahead and remove the sword? But it did go even further. I mean, there is nothing left in two strikes. Wow, what can you say about that? Definitely impressed once again with the damage of the bronze sword here on our skull. Okay, so this does have kind of like a spear point. It's very, very sharp. Actually, that's the sharpest part of this blade. So I'm going to go for a stab at the side of this guy's head because that's one of the parts that's left. And uh, actually, a lot of these swords are more meant for thrusting than they are for slashing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and test that. Why don't you give me a countdown? E. R. Sword. So it did graze the top. I think that was my mistake where it grazed, but it did cut. I mean, that's almost two inches of sword into the skull. Why don't we go ahead and do that again? E R sword. So yeah, there it is. This is able to actually pierce the skin and the skull. This is very, very, very devastating. E R sword. So, it did go into the skull, and our skull is not that thick, so it definitely penetrated all the way through the skull. I'm not sure if that much penetration would be considered a kill, but that went up into where the, um, right about there. That's pretty damn devastating. Alright, so I'm going to slice this one more time and just see what the bronze sword could do against our minghead. 
，一二三。So it's actually able to cut in through the skull and into here. Wow! I mean, this is just cutting the skull. There is just nothing that can withstand this thing. Wow! I am very, very impressed. So even though it is full tank and it's one piece of metal, I don't experience much force into my wrist. It, it actually just cuts through it almost like butter. That was actually very, very easy to cut. And it cut better than, much better than the Shanghai Spy Sword. I think it is a, maybe not a bit sharper. I think the Shanghai Spider is about as sharp. But this has mass. This is pretty, pretty heavy. Heavy stuff right here. I will tell you how uh, heavy below. But it is very, very good. Um, I don't see this really breaking or chipping. The only thing I can see is the point, if I stab it into something and went like this, it could break. But this is why we use bronze for so many years is because how powerful bronze went through. I mean, that was just a clean kill. I, that was the best kill we've had on the show so far on season two. Uh, I'm very impressed with the Danish bronze sword by Chris Laventino. So what would you have to say about this sword to conclude the video, Matt? Okay. So yeah, I'm also very, very impressed by this. This is really my first time testing anything bronze. Um, really, I haven't been around anything bronze other than a few sculpture, sculptures. But very, very impressed. The first strike was definitely, definitely a kill. Absolutely powerful. And I, I'm really impressed by this weapon. All right, please keep in mind, folks, this thing does not come with a sheath. You can make your own custom sheath if you want to, but by itself, it does not come with a sheath. All right, guys, I hope you like our first bronze testing. This was both mine and Matthew's first bronze weapon testing, and uh, I'm very happy to share with my brother here on Advanced Weapon Tactics. I'm happy to test our new Ming heads. One thing I will say about our Ming heads is I did put it in a bag, I think I'm just going to pour it into the skull next time because we're not seeing the blood splatter out before because it's not really cutting the bag, but we're able to get one hit kills with this. Actually, I would, I would have thought that the, this would be a better thruster, but it's much better for slashing, at least in our testing here. And uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the Danish bronze sword by Matthew, I mean by Chris Laventino. So, yeah, make sure to share the video because more of the people that watch it, the more the better weapons, the better stuff that we can test, the better analyze. But we're getting pretty close with our new Ming hands that are way, way better than our first season. And season two is looking really, really good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to test more and more weapons. I'm not sure what we're going to test next because I haven't, uh, I got to go back and make some more skulls. The skulls are all made. I just got to apply the skin and stuff. But we're going to be testing probably range. So I might do the Cobra Crossbow and a couple of other things. But we got a lot of new weapons. I got a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons that I haven't even tested or reviewed before. So um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff. I got a Dragon Claw, Chinese Dragon Claw. And I've also seen a bronze Chinese sword on eBay. It is going to take some bit of work to repair because it's kind of old. But the good thing about bronze is it doesn't really rust. And because it doesn't really rust, um, you, you don't have to oil it. I oil it because I like the yellow material, but if you don't, it'll turn like almost like a orangish or greenish, depending on the composition of the bronze. So I'm gonna try to keep it this yellow as, for as long as possible, but bronze doesn't really rust, and uh, bronze is really, really awesome. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe because I wanna test that out. I can't wait to buy the, the Chinese version and spruce it up. You know, they found in China, uh, a 3,000 year old Chinese bronze sword and it is still as functional today as it was back then. So. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe if you guys like this video. If you guys want to see something tested here on the show, be sure to write us out a comment of what you want to see tested.